Am I, am I on, am I, is this work, is this mic on? Hello, 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 can you hear me? It's funny because there's people who can't hear you that I let you know. You can tell who's a real, like within seconds. Huh? Welcome, everybody. Hello. Yay. Woo! Yay. Merry Hel Christmas Hello Eve. Hello to our online audience. Thank you guys for joining us. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time together. And um, um, uh, we are meeting together tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. For those of you who might be watching or if you'd like to return, those who are here in person, 10 o'clock, one service tomorrow, 10 o'clock. I know it's Christmas Day, so we decided we were going to go ahead and gather together and worship and share a little bit, and continue, continuing on in our, in our series of uh, coming and seeing the baby Jesus. And we'll talk about Simeon uh, and the prophetic words that he got, as well as Anna, the prophetess, and um, uh, the blessing that they had in playing a role in the, uh, well, at this time, Jesus would be a little child. And so, um, yeah, we're excited about that. Yeah, and so just a couple of quick announcements before we um, begin our celebration. This evening, um, as he said, we'll have a service tomorrow, one service tomorrow at 10 a.m., typically at 8.30 and 10.30. Um, also on New Year's Day, we'll only have one service at 10 a.m. So I want to make sure you've got the right times there. Uh, our offices will be closed this week, too, so I wanted to let you know that. If you uh, need anything, please feel free to uh, shoot us an email or leave a message. Um, and then lastly, we have one more. Oh, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. So I remember the last one. I'll pray, then it'll come to you. Okay. Amen. God, thank you for... <laughs> your grace in this place and in our hearts and lives. Thank you for uh, this special day that we celebrate and we look back that we might look forward. These celebrations are timeless because you're a timeless God. We can celebrate your birth and at the same time celebrate your coming again. And so thank you, God, for all of the efforts to make this just an amazing night for the music and the word and the worship. We give you all the praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. Glory, 
the King above all things. Go, go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, go, tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it, 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 go
and my drum. Me and my drum. Oh. oh. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> in our church, we've been in a series um, talking about the, um, the, um, the encounters that people had with the baby Jesus. Uh, in particular, um, unexpected encounters. We could call them interruptions. God has this tendency to interrupt the lives of people. I don't know if anybody here would agree with that, that at some point God may have interrupted you with something where you went, oh, okay, did not see that coming. The script that, that God uses when he writes about um, uh, the coming of Jesus Christ is not something that would be a, a contemporary script. It's, it's just the characters that are involved are just not someone that you would naturally uh, uh, think of. Um, but yet... There's a reason for it, and we'll get into that a little bit today as we look at the encounters of the shepherds and the wise men and the con comparing and the contrast, uh, but both invited to be a part of the story. Um, uh, so it's an amazing thing when you look at that, and the, the context of the time is this. It was, a, it was a hard time, very, very hard Herod the Great, um, arguably the greatest builder since King Solomon, had, had, had built amazing, amazing buildings in Jerusalem, and yet he was greatly feared because he, he had significant phobias and fears. Uh, I'm sure that the people of his palace said, hey, whatever you do, keep it peaceful in the house because literally when Herod got mad, heads were going to roll. Um, it was uh, not just Herod, but it was the Roman government that was uh, dictatorial, autocratic. Caesar was in charge. Uh, you basically had no rights. Uh, inflation was high. Unemployment was high. Uh, there was darkness in the land. A lot of religious observances had become just routine. And uh, lots of people were able to distinguish that that it was all about money because a lot of the belief system of the people of that time had become something that was all about money. And people recognized that. So in that time and in that place, God chooses to interrupt the lives of some people. And to start, he, he introduces Jesus, if you would, to these, to these shepherds. And why shepherds of all people? Well, before we get into that, let's read the narrative. So we have a shepherd who's going to come out and kind of um, share a little bit about uh, what the Scripture says. <clears throat> and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born to this day in this city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. <clears throat> and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them in heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see the thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they had made known around the <coughs> abroad the saying which was told concerning the child. And all that they heard is wonderful at those, those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God through all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. Amen. Appreciate a shepherd in Air Jordans. I thought you, it's always cool when that happens. Cultural context. Shepherds. You heard the expression, you can't make this stuff up. I think that really applies to this story. You just can't make this stuff up. Of all the people that you would invite to the fourth greatest event in all of time, the birth of the Messiah, shepherds would not be on your list. I put together this press conference. It's imaginary. It's not real. But um, at least I thought I did. I don't have it. Is this it? This is it. How'd you know this is it? You saw me fold it? Ah, uh, you got to watch that one. Check this out. Good afternoon. I want to address the news about a king being born in Bethlehem. As you know, we in the King Herod administration must deal with facts, not left-wing zealot conspiracy theories. I can assure you that Herod has, uh, the Great has no intentions of giving up his kingdom, and why would you expect him to do so, especially for a baby? And if there was such a king born, why would he come from Bethlehem rather than Rome? Clearly, uh, this unverifiable information from the shepherds is misinformation. Everybody knows you can't trust shepherds. The Herod administration believes that they are in cahoots with the zealots to overthrow the government and install their own king. Remember what happened the last time they tried to do this. So, we will not be taking any further questions on the new king, but now let's talk about a fresh round of taxes. <laughs> um, shepherds. Kind of on the lower socioeconomic scale of their time, there was a belief system that you couldn't trust a shepherd for anything and that they believed that what's mine, what's thine is mine. Uh, they would spend lots of time out in the fields with sheep, which would make them ceremoniously unpure. And so because of all the time outside, they couldn't get to the temple for temple purification. Um, not exactly the kind of people that you would invite to such a significant event. Priests, scribes, wise men, politicians, well, they're sort of on their way. Well, I want to read to you something that the angel said about the baby Jesus, some qualifiers that were given. It says in Luke chapter 2, in verse 10, then says, The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. And the book of Luke talks a lot about how this Jesus is not just for Israel, but for the entire world. For there is born to you... Isn't that interesting? Listen to that. Whoever had a child and said, oh, there is born to you, no one except the Christ child. There is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Let me just give you these words again. In the city of David, that would be Bethlehem, a Savior who is Christ, Christos, the Anointed One, the Messiah, a babe. Interesting. Those don't typically go together, but they do in this story. And so, he tells them not to be afraid and to receive the message from the angels. So, when the Son of Man comes to earth, who's at his, who are the first ones invited to greet him, if you would? Shepherds. Why? 
Why would God do that? Well, it's because I believe that the grace of God toward mankind is revealed in shepherds being there. It's just not the way we would do it, but it's the way God does it. And then it says in verse 16, they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. So first, what did they do? They believed. They believed in the message of the angels. So it's one thing to believe. But if that belief doesn't cause you to respond, it doesn't cause you to change, it doesn't cause you to do something about it, one might question what you exactly believe. They believed and they responded. They went with haste and they told everybody the good news of what they had experienced. It's incredible. They could have run the other way and said, I don't know if you saw what I saw, but that was crazy. No, they stayed and they listened and they believed. I wonder what kinds of conversations they had. Can you believe that just us, like shepherds, they called us to go see the king? Well, we don't know, but we do know that they rejoiced. They told everybody the good news.
<laughs> Magi, wise men, um, schooled in the arts, the sciences. They look to the stars for answers to life's questions. Astronomers, maybe even astrologers, who believe that the stars had supernatural messages for people. Um, in their wildest imagination, they would have never imagined or believed in the things that we see like this. Incredible. Surely, creation itself displays the grandeur and the majesty of God. It declares His glory. I think the deeper we get into these things, the more we go, okay, yeah, there has to be a God. Who knows? Magi. We would probably say from a religious perspective, they might have been New Age philosophers. We don't know. Scientists, perhaps. There was something that they saw from wherever they came from. We don't know where they came from. They came a great distance, though, and we, knew, we know that they had the means to take on this kind of... It was a long journey, cost a lot of money, and a significant hardship and danger. So the idea of three wise men is just not biblical. Nowhere does it say that. This was a large company of people that traveled a great distance. I would submit to you that they were looking for something deeper than what they saw in the stars. The Bible says that if you search for him with all of your heart, you will find him. He is not hidden away that you can't find him. If you look for him, and if you look into the stars deep enough, and your heart is open, God will find you. And maybe that's where these men were. They had studied, and then they saw something, and it caused them to do something. Let's hear it from one of the wise men himself. <laughs> King, King Richard, King Richard. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of King Herod, behold, there were wise men that had come from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is the uh, child, or where is born the king of the Jews? For we have come to see and seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all of the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, and though Bethlehem is the land of Judea, art not the least of these the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come the governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he, was, he had privily called the wise men, inquired to them diligently the, the, time, the time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring word to me again, and I will come and I will worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star where they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they, had then when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And then they had opened up their treasures and presented unto him gifts of gold, of frankincense, and of myrrh. And being warned by God in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Amen. So Herod lies to the wise men. He says, let me know when you find him where he's at so that I can worship him too. He's not going to worship him. This is the King Herod who would kill all the babies two years old and younger in Bethlehem. There are religious leaders of the day that are able to discern what the scriptures say. They ask, Herod asked them, where is this child to be born? And they quote the scriptures and say, in Bethlehem. So they had enough 
scriptures to know what they said, but not enough faith to believe, because apparently they weren't searching for the Messiah to come. So three responses. Herod responds with hostility. The religious leaders are mostly indifferent, and the wise men found him. It's interesting that the star drew them all the way to Jerusalem. They inquired more, and then the star reappeared in Bethlehem to the place now where Joseph and Mary and Jesus are in a home. They're not in the manger when the wise men get there, but they find him and they bring their gifts. They believe in this truth and they do something about it and take a difficult journey, and when they meet the king, they give the best that they had. They weren't satisfied with Jerusalem because to be in Jerusalem was to be in the heartbeat of Jewish life in one of the great cities of antiquity. King Herod the Great and his colossal building program was awesome. They weren't, they weren't content in just seeing Jerusalem. Their purpose and plans were bigger than sightseeing or meeting King Herod, one of the strongest men of his region, the king. No, they weren't, they weren't distracted by the palace. No, they had bigger plans. They had brought their best gifts, and we don't read about them giving anything to Herod. doesn't mean they didn't. We just don't read about it. But they kept their best gifts for the baby Jesus. Why the Magi? Why the Magi? Well, the shepherds have already come and gone. Now, the Magi. I believe the story of the Magi is the grace of God saying that this salvation is for all people, whether rich or whether poor, whether from this side or from that side, whether native Jews or whether Gentiles from a great distance. The gospel message of Jesus Christ and the birth of Jesus that we celebrate is for all people. Some people try to make it geographic or they try to make it racial or ethnic. It's none of those. He is the Savior of the whole world. And that's what we celebrate and rejoice in. Become the least for 
Robert Morris Page was a physicist who invented pulsar radar detection used for detecting aircraft. He held 37 other patents. And in his analysis of the scriptures and the pro prophetic writings, he, he writes this, the authenticity of the writings of the prophets through the men themselves, though the men themselves are human, is established by, uh, by such things as the prediction of highly significant events far in the future that could be accomplished only through a knowledge ordained from a realm that is not subject to the laws of time as we know them. Um, to compare, contrast, shepherds on the outside, not really famous, for sure, despised, had a reputation for being thieves, um, poor, uneducated, pretty much stuck in the shepherding business, considered unclean because they can't get to the temple to be ceremoniously cleansed. On the other hand, the wise men educated, wealthy, well-connected, movers and shakers in their society, um, seemingly had everything that one would want, had the money to finance this great trip. I think that that's an example of why Jesus came for the whole world. And I also think it illustrates this. Whether you're poor or you're rich or somewhere in between, and that's relative, by the way, whether you are educated or uneducated, whether you are a person of status or not, whatever that means, everybody's valuable, whether you are from this side of the tracks or that side of the tracks, whatever your socioeconomic background is, whatever your racial uh, 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 mix is, and we're all mixed with something, right? Right? Whatever it is, there's one common theme that both these shepherds and the wise men needed, and that was salvation. They needed a Savior. 
We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us have, and so we need a Savior. That Savior was born 2,000 years ago. His name is Jesus, and we celebrate that, and we worship Him. It's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And He's the only one who can forgive us of our sins and make us right with God. And the same thing that they needed is the same thing that I need. And it's the same thing that we need. We need salvation. We need right relationship with God. And we've all sinned and fallen short of that mark. So that's why we believe in Jesus. And that's why we trust in Him. And not just believe, but we're willing to stake our eternity that Jesus is who He said He is. Could you imagine the conversation that the shepherds had? Could you imagine the conversation that the wise men had when they went back? Oh, they told everybody. Can you imagine they get back to their far land? How was your trip? Stop. I got to tell you what happened. How about the shepherds? It was amazing. Are you sure? How do I know you're not lying? Yo, talk to my friend. He was standing right there. All of us heard it. Yeah, God flips the script. He writes it in a way that you and I don't typically imagine. And so here's my question is, I kind of close my part, is how have you responded? Because truth makes us respond somehow. When someone tells you the truth that's a friend, you might go, you know what? I hate you, but you're right. <laughs> they responded and they worshiped and they told others. How about you? No, really. Do you believe? No, not just do you know about. Because one thing to, oh, yeah, 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 I know about Jesus. I grew up in, no, 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 no. Do you believe? Because if you believe, it'll cause you to do something when you believe in the truth. And how has that truth changed your life? And if it hasn't, it's okay. Our prayer is that you would believe and then you would be and do. And we can help you along in the journey. We're here to help you along. If you're watching online, type us in and let us know. We want to join you in the journey because that's really what it's all about. So that's what we celebrate. That's what we celebrate. We also like to light candles in this candlelight portion. And so if I could have those candle lighters. The candle lighters are here. They could uh, light the candles. And we'll sing some worship songs. Pete? Oh, yeah.
John chapter 1 says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. Uh, through, uh, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And it's not just darkness as in turn off the lights and hide. It is spiritual darkness that is so thick you can't penetrate it and you can't get through it. Jesus is the light. He is our light and he illuminates the darkness in this world and in our lives. And we celebrate Jesus, the light of the world. So Father, thank you for this amazing time together and we love celebrating this help us to have an everyday christmas reality lord help us to not only uh, hold up this light but to tell others and share the reason for the light lord we pray that uh, you would bring divine appointments our way we pray oh god that you would use us for your glory to be lights just as you are the light of the world in jesus name we celebrate you Amen.
<laughs> yeah. I know, you want to clap your hands, just do this. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, um, we'll close with this. These guys are going to do like a, like a trumpet thing that's pretty cool on your way out, you know, so check it out. Um, I, I want to share this with you. Jesus will meet you right where you are. Notice that he meets the shepherds right where they are. He meets the wise men right where they are. And he meets you right where you are with your questions, with your difficulties, with your struggles. No, he meets you right there. But the question is, will you meet him? That's always the question. That's always the question. And our prayer is that you will. If we can help you along on that journey, please let us know. God bless you guys. Have a great, great celebration, everyday Christmas.